Hi everybody and welcome to your channel, Spanish Pills, the best YouTube channel to learn to speak Spanish. Hola a todos y a todas, valientes amantes del español, y bienvenidos a vuestro canal, Spanish Pills, el mejor canal de YouTube para aprender a hablar español. Here you have a new list of real-life basic Spanish phrases that you can start using right now if you want to have a conversation in Spanish. All these basic Spanish phrases have something in common. Do you want to know what that is? Okay, let's start. Tres, dos, uno, comenzamos. Okay, take a look at this. Muy or mucho. This is what this video is about. General rule. Very means muy. Very much means mucho. So far so good? Great. Because things are about to get a bit messy right now. Okay, now take a look at this. Exceptions. Really means muy. Really means mucho. What's going on here? Okay, it's not as difficult as it seems. It's more Let's say I rather call it a challenge, okay? You know how much I like a challenge. So, are you up for the challenge? Yes, you are. Come on, you know you are smart enough to overcome these or any other challenges that you have to face in order to learn to speak Spanish. So, let's start with the first sentence. This way you will finally find out how this really works and you will realize that it's not that hard. It's not that difficult, I promise. And the more you practice, the easier it gets. Esto es muy fácil. This is very easy. This is really easy. Let's observe this sentence. Let's pay attention to the word muy. And pay attention to the word that comes after. Fácil. It is an adjective. So, when you have an adjective, you use the word muy and not mucho. Even though sometimes muy and mucho means really in English. And as you can see, it's correct to use them both in English. This is very easy, this is really easy, they both mean the same, right? Okay, let me please explain you something else about this sentence. This is something extra. It has nothing to do with muy or mucho, but you know how I am. I can't control myself. So, the word esto means this. Remember that the word this can be translated as esto, este, and esta. And esto and este are both singular and masculine. So, why do I use esto instead of este? Because after this, you don't have a noun. If you had a noun, you would have to use este or esta. You would use este if you had a noun next to it, a masculine and singular noun next to it, like this car, este coche. You would use esta if you had a feminine and singular noun next to it, like this house, esta casa. But in this case, the only option is esto, because what you have next to it is a verb. Now, let's get back to the difference between muy and mucho in Spanish. Me gustas mucho. I like you very much. Or, I really like you. Well, as you can see, the adverb mucho, in this case, is affecting the verb. I mean, it is modifying the verb. 
it is telling us how much you like someone. In a way, we can say that it's only giving us more information about the verb. Only the verb. So, if we want to reveal information about the verb, we use mucho instead of muy. It wasn't that hard after all, right? Now let's put all this into practice and see if you've understood how it works, okay? Tu hermano es missing word guapo. And the missing word is muy because you have an adjective next to it. Tu hermano es muy guapo. Guapo is an adjective, and since you're talking about your brother, masculine and singular, the adjective has to be masculine and singular. That's why we say guapo, instead of guapa, feminine and singular. That would be, for example, tu hermana es muy guapa. By the way, the verb to be in Spanish can be translated as ser or estar. I'm not going to get into that because this is not the point of the video, but I just wanted you to know why I translated in this sentence the verb to be as ser into Spanish. This is a very good example. Tu hermano es muy guapo means that this is a permanent quality. He's always handsome. If I had translated the sentence as tu hermano está muy guapo, it would mean something different. It would mean that today, exceptionally, he looks handsome. Since we don't have a context here, I've realized that both translations would be correct. You could either say tu hermano es muy guapo or tu hermano está muy guapo. We don't have any extra information to know what you mean, so it's up to you. What did you mean? Bailas missing word bien. Bailas muy bien. Even though bien is not an adjective but an adverb, the missing word muy is making allusion to the word that comes after bien and not the verb that comes before. So, bailas muy bien. That's the right way of saying this in Spanish. Me gustan missing word tus recetas. Son missing word fáciles. Me gustan mucho tus recetas. Son muy fáciles. We had two missing words. Mucho and muy. Let's pay attention to the first one. Me gustan mucho tus recetas. ¿Por qué mucho? Because the adverb mucho is making allusion to the verb. You're talking about how much you like someone's recipes. Me gustan mucho tus recetas. I'm not going to say anything about the verb gustar in Spanish, so don't panic. But I have a couple of videos where I explain to you how to use this verb in Spanish, okay? If you have time, if you're interested, take a look at them. Son muy interesantes, and they will be very helpful, you'll see. Well, about the second sentence, the verb to be is son, plural, because the subject is tus recetas, the verb to be is making allusion to your recipes. They, ellas, son muy fáciles. You had a missing word. After that missing word, you had an adjective. So the only possibility was muy. Son muy fáciles. And just something else about the adjective fácil. It's the same for the masculine and for the feminine. Fácil. Masculine, singular. Feminine, singular. Fáciles. 
masculine plural, feminine plural. Do you want to give it a try and write your own sentence using the word fácil in Spanish? You are more than welcome to do so. But only if you want to. No pressure. Shall we try another one? Okay. Nuestros vecinos son, missing word, amables. And what was the missing word? Muy. Nuestros nuevos vecinos son muy amables. ¿Y por qué muy? Well, because you had a word next to it, after it, that was an adjective. Amables. So the only option was muy. Like it happened with the adjective fácil, the adjective amable is the same for the feminine and for the masculine. So, amables is masculine and plural, but also it could be feminine and plural. In this case, the subject, nuestros vecinos, is masculine and plural. So that's why we know that amables is masculine and plural. And amable, without the S, could either be masculine and singular or feminine and singular. Amable. Me duele mucho. Missing word. La barriga porque comí. Missing word. De prisa. Me duele mucho la barriga porque comí muy de prisa. Mucho and muy. They were the missing words in these two sentences. Pero, ¿por qué? En la primera frase, in the first sentence, el adverbio mucho, the adverb mucho, is revealing information about the verb, doler. Me duele mucho la barriga. And not the belly. Porque comí muy deprisa. After the missing word in la segunda frase, in the second sentence, you have an adverb. So the only possibility is muy. Muy deprisa. Now let's take a break and see the preterite of the verb comer in Spanish. Yo comí. Tú comiste. Él, ella comió. Nosotros, nosotras comimos. Vosotros, vosotras comisteis. Ellos, ellas comieron. Okay, let's try another sentence. Es missing word. Tarde. Te llamo mañana y hablamos. Vale. Es muy tarde. Te llamo mañana y hablamos. Vale. So, the missing word was muy. Why? Because of tarde. Remember that before an adverb, you can only use muy. Never mucho. There is something else very important and interesting about the second sentence. Notice how in Spanish we say, te llamo mañana y hablamos, ¿vale? And in English, you say, I will call you tomorrow and we will talk, okay? Well, it makes more sense in English rather than in Spanish because you're using the future, because you're talking about an action that will happen tomorrow. But in Spanish, we use the present simple. Why? Well, that's a mystery we won't solve today. And then, the last thing. Okay, in Spanish, vale. Although you can say okay in Spanish and everybody will understand you. Para aprobar, tienes que esforzarte, missing word, más. Para aprobar, Tienes que esforzarte mucho más. Mucho is the missing word. Because you cannot say muy más. Always mucho más. Mucho is modifying más. However, in English, mucho is modifying harder. Much harder. Notice how the word order is different in English and in Spanish. In Spanish, we usually say para aprobar at the very beginning and in English you put it at the very end. When you say you have to work 
much harder to pass. One more thing about the verb esforzarse. It's a reflexive verb in Spanish. It means in English to work harder. And as a reflexive verb in Spanish, it needs a reflexive pronoun. But since it is an infinitive, the reflexive pronoun is put at the end of the verb and it is just one word. Esforzarte. Te would be the reflexive pronoun. Tenemos missing word hambre. Tenemos mucha hambre. The missing word is mucha. But the way we say this sentence in Spanish is a lot faster. I'm going to say it to you the way we do in real life. Tenemos mucha hambre. Don't panic. If you practice, you can say this fast, even faster if you want. Okay, let me give you one pronunciation tip. Mucha hambre. The way we say it, it is as if it was just one word. Mucha hambre. Try to pronounce mucha hambre as if it was spelled M-U-C-H-A-M-B-R-E. Can you notice the difference? Isn't it a little bit easier if you try to pronounce it like that? Espero que sí. And now, why is the missing word mucha instead of muy? The word mucha is not modifying the verb, but it is revealing information about the word that is next to it, hambre. Hambre is a noun, so you cannot use muy. Remember, We use muy with an adjective, for example, muy bonito, or we use muy with an adverb, for example, muy bien. Before moving on, let me tell you something weird about this sentence. Mucha hambre. Hambre is masculine and singular, but we say mucha, feminine and singular. It's a weird thing. When you use The word mucha, with hambre, you have to use it as it was feminine, not masculine. If you use the definite article before hambre, you say el, masculine and singular, el hambre. But if you want to use an adjective, you have to use a feminine and singular adjective. Very weird thing. Te agradezco. Missing word, tu ayuda. Te agradezco mucho tu ayuda. The word we were looking for is mucho because it is modifying the verb. And the verb to appreciate is agradecer in Spanish. In this sentence, I'm trying to let you know how much I appreciate what you've done for me. And about the first word of the sentence, te, this personal pronoun, you don't say it in English. And it makes more sense in English because you're saying your help. So we already know who you feel grateful to. But in Spanish, you do have to say it like twice. This one has too many missing words. Creo que tomé missing word café. No tengo missing word sueño. No voy a poder dormir, missing word, esta noche. But as you can see, it's much easier than it looks like at first. Creo que tomé mucho café. No tengo mucho sueño. No voy a poder dormir mucho esta noche. First missing word, mucho. Because of the word that comes after. Café, a noun, remember. With a noun, you cannot use muy. And we say mucho because café is masculine and singular. The next one, mucho sueño. It's the same thing. You cannot use muy with a noun, sueño. Sueño is masculine and singular, so you say mucho. And the last one, this is a little bit different because mucho is modifying the verb. El té está 
missing word caliente. El té está muy caliente. Why muy? Because of caliente, an adjective. And notice that this adjective is the same for the masculine and for the feminine. For instance, the soup is very hot. La sopa está muy caliente. And the plural would be calientes, for the feminine and for the masculine. And one thing that both languages, English and Spanish, have in common in this sentence is the use of the definite article, el té, the tea. María está, missing word, fuerte. Va al gimnasio todos los días. Muy bien. The missing word is muy. María está muy fuerte. Va al gimnasio todos los días. Why muy? Because of fuerte, an adjective. And two more things. The adjective fuerte is the same for the masculine and for the feminine. If the subject wasn't María, but Carlos, it would be Carlos está muy fuerte. And why did I translate the verb to be as estar instead of ser in Spanish? Because we are talking about some characteristics about María that are not permanent. She hasn't always been that strong. You know what I mean? Y la última frase, the last sentence. En Madrid hay, missing word, edificios antiguos sin ascensor. En Madrid hay muchos edificios antiguos sin ascensor. The missing word is muchos. We use muchos, masculine and plural, because of edificios. Now, the adjective old can be translated into Spanish as viejo or antiguo. What's the difference? The adjective viejo in Spanish always has negative connotations. If I say that a building is viejo, I'm saying that it is probably ruined. But if I say that a building is antiguo, I am trying to show some respect, as if I was admiring that building, as if it was a historical building. You know what I mean? Okay, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you've learned a lot. Remember, like and subscribe. Hasta pronto. Adios.